thanks for coming in and, uh, and visiting my little uh, presentation about vacuum cleaners and biomed. So, uh, you know, with the, with the onset of the pandemic, we, we had to get creative about how we could teach our students. So what we'll do today is review uh, Northwest, no, I'm sorry, Northeastern Wisconsin Technical Colleges in Green Bay, uh, Wisconsin, and what our COVID solution was for our Biomed 101 class, why we chose vacuum cleaners, and then we'll talk about COVID in Biomed and see how, if there's anything we can do, share share ideas and exchange to see what we can do differently or do or what we're doing in our shops to cope with this. So here's Biomed 101. It is actually the first class that uh, Biomed students take. It's in the second semester of the first year. And it literally is behind on my kids. But it's basic, basic Biomed. This is the description off of the uh, school uh, syllabus, uh, introduction to Biomed instrumentation. Hospital, COVID, right? We just kind of teach kids what we're all about. And it's the first time they actually get to use tools and, and see Biomed stuff and play with some devices and gadgets. It's kind of how this rolled around, you know, like everybody, we started this. So this, this semester started in, you know, in January, uh, almost normally. You know, I'm, a, I'm not a full-time instructor at NWTC. I'm a part-time adjunct instructor. I got called on because the regular instructor, had, he'll get to me in the video here for a bit, uh, got, got uh, some plan uh, surgery. He had to go out. So it was, uh, you know, six to 10 weeks. And they always they don't give you a real exact amount. It's everybody's different. So I was sub, and I got to teach the first half semester to about spring break, which is in uh, the end of February. I mean, never quite, we didn't quite make it that far because of COVID. We canceled, canceled school on week seven. So we never did quite get the materials. First lab, she had a useful skill, right? Everybody has to change plugs because they wear out, people are using them. Um, but it gives us a couple things as instructors. I can see how many students really know how to use this rear end. And quite a few, but don't laugh, a lot of them don't. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and a wire cutter, and most of them had never touched a wire cutter in their life. They didn't know what it was. So, anyway, so we, have to, we put, the, put, put a piece of cord and plug in front of them here, you know, install it. You know, we show them, give the demonstration, let them go to town. And I wish I could remember to take some pictures of their, of their work because it was pretty bad. But we did get to figure out, you know, you know this it kind of shapes the, what we're going to teach in the future. You know, how much time we need to spend on a, a topic of hand tools and what to do. Uh, the second half was just basic climate instrumentation. They get to see what we do with what, what all this, the, the kinds of instruments we use in the lab every day. The safety detector. We have VCs as well in our lot in our shop. So we spent the lecture part here is why leakage current is such a big deal. But if you go to Dr. Frango's presentation about leakage, we're going to argue that <laughs> someone else puts it. <laughs> but it, it is a big deal. It's a big deal because we have to check it. And despite what Dr. Frango contends, it's still a big deal. So here's the students. There's six of them. And they're all still in school. And they're in their second year now. Uh, we've got them all dressed up to go pick them up for surgery. Uh, the part of the part of the education is the day in the life. What does the body do for a living? So we're going to the hospital. They spend uh, half a day there, kind of shadowing people around uh, in, in in anticipation of a full internship, which comes later in their educational career. But this is the last time we actually got together after this after we did the tour of the hospital. We closed the school. So we're done. So what do we do? I mean, the uh, midterms came around, and, and uh, the regular instructor is pretty much coming back to work now. So I'm working with him to get this all set up. Um, and he and I sat down and said, "Well, well how do we, how do we keep going?" So you know, lectures are by conference call or video call. With them, they would does that now. That all schools do that. But how do you do labs? Because half of this class was labs. So here's what we thought. We we said, "Well, we got to do home based." Maybe cheap, some sort of electromechanical device. Got to find service documentation somewhere. It's, that, you know, it's, it's, it's not intuitive to the to the uh, students. Uh, got a easy to find and small enough to carry and limited tools. So we didn't want to have a lot of exotic tools to be able to do this. So what what did we come up with? You know, voila. 
because that could be just like the ones that were in my crop. So what, why, why, why do we think they're a lot like my meds? <laughs> and the victim of a nurse. Uh, yeah. well, I gotta love them. They got it. That's one of them. In your record, I bet you it looks just as big up as this guy here. So I turn the box. Cord switches and plugs. Most of our guys did cord switches and plugs. Motors, belts, and plates. Some of ours do. Some do. Suction. You've heard that word in the bottom of it a lot. It's got suction. performance varies widely depending on everything. So uh, I intended this to be, you know, operators aren't the best at following directions. And you know, how many times do you get a service call for a device that's working perfectly, but the nurse can't get it to go, or the tech can't get it to go, only because they don't have the uh, hose hooked in the right port. So what everything. Oh yeah, I wasn't touching these bill on massive going on with you. Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea. It's a used vacuum. I have no idea what it is. Ten wear parts. Something wears out, needs to be fixed. Something falls off. You need to replace it. Figure out what it is. Uh, what's different? Well, we're not obviously not medical quality parts. So it's a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> it's kind of obvious. Um, oh, so let's. Uh, there's a little video that the local TV station did, and let me see if I can get it to go here. Oops. Oops. Stop. Why should pay for it? And there's a commercial. There's always a commercial. Oh. Let's do this because I'm not going to fiddle with it a little bit. The instructor there was Don Cormier. He's the lead instructor for biomed at, at uh, in Green Bay. He was the guy that went off sick. So, good. 
Sweet that cords. So, uh, you know, the lab started off by picking a vacuum cleaner, and then we, uh, most of you have uh, some sort of inventory control system, and we had to enter all that. We had a, they had a couple of inventory sheets that uh, found all those numbers and sort of them for their, um, for their work. Uh, we could go through one of the labs, but I think we're here to So, but we did have, it was a, there was six labs that we developed to, uh, troubleshoot and repair things in a vacuum cleaner. So, uh, so the students responded well. They, and as you saw in the video, they understood the difficulties we all were in. So, we had six total vacuum cleaners. Four of them survived work when we were done, two of them not so much. Um, and uh, we were kind of surprised that the TV thing went that we had a lot of community donations and beauty as well. People are going to get rid of their vacuum cleaners. So that's kind of in a nutshell what we did. Um, and I, what I wanted to do was spend some time talking about Coke with everybody here to see what they're doing in their shops and what you know we can spread a few ideas around. See if there's some magic to uh, getting people, keeping them motivated. It's tough. I know we're always kind of really tired of this. I know I am. So we got so. Does anybody do screening when they get to the hospital? Do they have to they get temperatures? You, you do that in the trap. You, you don't screen, you got a screening station? You pull out the screen. And then you scan me and I'll have to do a bus once in a while. Okay. Oh. oh, yeah, we have a cell phone monitor. Okay, yeah. We, other, we, other employees in the hospital have to go to the front door and do it that way. Okay. Well, do they have uh, ready access to hand sanitizer and all that stuff? Big jug of it maybe in your shop? Is that a trick? The hospital's got it every day. Sure. So, I suppose we, we, we have to go through the thicker plant every day, which, you know, for a guy, it sucks because now you put a sticker over it and crap. But everybody tracks it out. Bottom layer that put on the finger. Oh, but I here's our our house. I'll show you. I gotta I gotta actually log in. They do an app. Yeah. So it looks like that's this is this is my entrance to So it actually it goes through the COVID collection. You have to be the if you've been near people, there's all the like four or five questions. And then you answer all those questions. Um, it comes back with, and I flash this to the person in the door screener and a little bit wear a mask and I go. So it's kind of nice. Yeah. So this is today. I had to log in today and get it. So we can take a screenshot of that. It does kind of nice. Is recorded because if you answer yes to any of those questions, somebody calls you. And you know, they got you because they trap you, they capture your phone number when they do that. So if you answer yes, that I've been exposed, or yes, I've got a fever, somebody from from the health uh, from the employee health club calls you and says, Hey, what's going on? <laughs> and I would know that we had a, anybody have a, a one of your folks to shop at Kobe? Yeah, several times, you know, yeah, I've got three, yeah, yeah. yeah. One other lead at Riverside, well, and then just last week we had another tech in one of our designs. Uh -huh. uh, so they had to have three shops. That was part of the contingency plan to keep all the shops separate. So that yeah. in case somebody did get sick in the shop, only two or three were closed. We, 
you know, I sent my well, we'll come back to this, but we sent our, our imaging guys home. We said work out of your house for a while. You know, you know, they're all over the place anyway. They, you know, I've met folks who work at the bench, that's different. You know, they have to come in and, and work bench work. Um, but so I had to scrub out I had to find extra space and extra benches to get them out of the room and you know, all that stuff, just like you know, social distance. Interesting why uh, everybody sat down with their thermometer, right? That way <laughs> you couldn't order uh, as many as they wanted. So originally we went to the hospital of CIR ones to correct four heads, but you only get five. Yeah. And, 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 you need, and you need 200 face numbers. And then they created food that the regional bar. The ones that don't have the ones that don't have the instructions on how we're afraid. Yeah. Or I'm still getting those back. Yeah, we just throw them off. Exactly. And that's what I don't think about it. Which is a surprising part of it. I'd say on average one to twice a month where you get an urgent call and you say, maybe you better check the thermometer now. Really? That's not an urgent call. Yeah. Yes, it is. And, and even when we tell them we won't get there for a little while, they all go straight to the command center, call the boss, call the shop, they send somebody there now. And it turns out they doesn't have a feeder, not the thermometer. <laughs> so it's doing its job. But as I said, at least twice a month. They can have IT took over with a contractor. Really? Uh, using the Then now they went with the uh, infrared whole body scanner at the entrance. So now you're just scanning through and they're just waiting until after you have this question. But that can pose its own problem, right? The guy got the cables running down and tied them. And then they got to see what the Wi Fi is to get bugs. Um, so that solution has been a pain, but has. A single signal of so now our call for those come down for me. Yeah. Our first call for those is somebody drop it and you know a million pieces on the board. <laughs> Can you fix it? Uh, no, but we're gonna order another one supply because <laughs> I can't go back and forth with the calls or not the first batteries. Yeah, oh yeah, no, that you know we are we have funny little bug batteries in ours. Uh, if you need a tool to change it. Even if it's a dime to turn this, the quarter turn the screw, we do. Buy a minute. You don't need a tool. The dapper is supposed to change it. But you don't need a tool. It's just a little thumb with a little thumb lash. You can just pop the thing open, the battery can drop out. And, you know, if you want to know, don't, don't you change batteries in the remote? <laughs> it's a thing. That common sense thing. Right? It goes out the door. Yeah. Like, uh, do you really call your electricity? Fix your Shop. 
Wisconsin, you haven't heard of both the surge. Um, we, we got off lucky um, on the onset. It, 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 I look at the hospital's name, I mean, hospital St. Elizabeth, so it's an apple from Wisconsin. Uh, we had two or three other patients with us. That, that was all we had. And then I didn't check this morning because I didn't sit in on the huddle, but um, we had, they, they, they had 27 yesterday. They were pretty well mixed up. From no you know, they're going to start, they have to start doing expansion. We had all those plans months ago before the world started. Are we having to do so? You guys are going to be trouble with cleaners. They change cleaners, you know, they want, they want stuff that kills and everything. Okay. Is that the state that mandated a code that you can go over to document the deterioration of a plastic? Yeah. Oh. Okay. They wanted that right away. Could, you know, whatever. They were using it. You no, know, bleach white ones, and now they're using something else. Yeah. And they just. Yeah. We keep sending them out going, okay, he's the one you use. How come we're getting you know, the ours are rich? Five pounds. So, you know, you're 18 plus. I don't want this. I don't want those wonderful or something. I'm just going to be mixed with it. The water, I guess. That's very easy. Yeah, I don't know if it's good for you or better at it, but here's what they're doing. So they just don't have a little bit of a problem. You know, we're, we're big on the, on the, on the, dispen you know, the, the, the uh, liquid, uh, the, the rain dispensers, with the purple tops and the gray tops. And they're, they're running short. I mean, they've been running short since COVID came out. It's hard to get those things. So those were pretty benign on a lot of equipment. They, they killed stuff, but didn't kill the equipment too. And so they're running out of that. And they're starting to use some some stuff that leads plastic. And we've changed monography um, um, panels like they're still on the style. I don't know what they're wiping those things down with, but they just they crack. They, they, they normally, two years ago, you replaced a motor tool a year because they dropped it. Now I'm playing. I'm playing two a month. And it just crap all by itself. So whatever they put on it, we're trying to get to stop. So, you guys make this thing. Exactly. <laughs> stop. The useless thing here, Phil, is the stuff you're supposed to use. I don't know if it's just that it's better to go with the two time mode and they just pull it right. You know, okay. that, well, we get done the stuff when they but uh, the biggest problem with the liquid they're mixing now. Is uh, they're just slopping it off. Oh, so yeah. I used to carry one not the 500 play, you know, and it's just easier, right? Because over time, I try to do the ribbon cable and try to get just play in place. We would be able to get away with that today. The moment I start taking off the bed, everything cracks. So now I, I can pretty much with everything ribbon cable, so it's just easier to slot. But the top is. Really, yeah. well, and, and it's happening everywhere. The clinics yeah. and the hospitals. So, the, the hospitals, one of their considerations is called well private How long you got to leave a wet? I guess they put it on, you know, and, um, and they, 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 they consider the eye tunnel areas, the uh, imaging sometimes, the eye tunnel area, they want, they want patients in and quickly. So, they want the low well time stuff on that, which seems to be the killer stuff. I had tried that, uh, I had seen the Montero. Has a real nice glass top, uh, and they use the uh, Bluetooth uh, patient electrode. That will go in the room, and then outside the state, they have the machine itself. 
like we really want to go, but unfortunately it didn't go for it. Uh, so the EKG is just the yeah. um, What One of the things I did want to say was the uh, San Diego, we have a large fleet of Navy guys there. Mm -hmm. In the ship, mm -hmm. um, they implemented a, a strict no entrance into the violent shop. So, CBS, delivery, mm -hmm. nothing goes in there. Really, the violent sets. And they were on uh, well, the ship certification pool. It, not well, in the, in the shop. Oh, yeah, so nobody goes in there at all. And they have their uh, one of the second floor shops that's their dedicated equipment and so no 30 equipment comes into the shop at all they're, they got all different posts okay to their uh unit well it's easy to talk it's easy to the base commander says this is what we're going to do and everybody does it it's not like trying to convince all yeah, the I mean, it's, it's a little overkill but yeah uh, so so we came to come back around to that. Um the if you get a, a one of your associates in the shop gets COVID from something outside your community, you know. I I uh, I got a couple of my guys off the cliff, you know, they when this first started, they all wanted they all wanted to go hide somewhere in the woods. You know, we're in the desert, you know, those case may be and and they won't let them down. And I told him, look, you're in a hospital. Everybody here knows the drill. This is the safest place in the world to be. The grocery store on the other hand, bad news. You know, who wants to go and mingle with everybody else and not taking this very seriously? So, uh, what do you do if one of your associates, one of the guys in the shop or gal in the shop gets COVID? Do you think? Uh, so, it happened last week. Yeah. Uh, everybody got tested. Uh, they're gonna get retested at uh, least at the end of the week. Okay. Next week, um, if there's more isolation between the shops. So. How, how do you deal with all of the speed of change here? Because a month ago you couldn't get tested without having symptoms. You had to lie. You had to lie to the parents. Now, now anybody who wants to can get a test. But how do you how do you know that, that change that change quickly overnight actually? How do you how do you deal with it you know, that, that fast like people? When it when, when COVID onset, they're changing rules every day. You know, like every day the hospital comes out and said, Oh, this is what we're gonna do this thing. Oh wait, we're not gonna get anywhere with it this way. How do you deal with it? Any strategies for filtering that through, especially if everybody's not in the same place you are. You get remote guys, like I think our imaging guys when they're all at home, the email. Well, originally the the unions were really pushing for periodic patient tests, mm -hmm. but uh, that didn't get around at all. Really well, and so over time, uh, we were all mm -hmm. members as well as uh, providers. So we started passing around uh, the instructions on how to order your tests mm -hmm. to the app. So you could do both the uh, antibody for the type, um, and that's what they like started doing. You know, they felt like whatever they want to go down the scan, they can see what it is. So far, so good. That's been working out. But as far as on the job, you know, mandated testing, we don't do that. 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 Somebody come in in a couple weeks and get back. Where are they going to get tested? How can I get tested? Because I was like, nah. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the, um, we, we, had a, we had a couple of ours um, catching outside outside of work. You know, they, they just, I think one was a funeral like I went to, and there was a big uh, gathering after the service, and you know, the mass works. Everybody played squad because there was, was one person that was. Literally, including my employee and his wife. So it's tough. Um, we uh, 
now we would test everybody in that they've been exposed to or thought they might have been exposed to. I mean, the, the public only couldn't do that. Now we can, so that's everybody gets to test. And you know, stay home, not stay home, home. Just when you're done work, go home and stay there. Three different times. Yeah. Uh, so the initial batch of whatever we yeah. 18 weeks. Yeah. The most numbers are never going to be Never going to land with zero going around. And so everybody has to get three different tested. Now we're back to a 3 a.m. week, whatever it was. Yeah. 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 Uh, of drawer with the regular clean regular mask that goes will be we'll wearing in the shop and yeah. outside. But we do have the badge of it. Full time mask policy while you're in the room. Yeah. So Even in the shop. We are made it, but get away. While you're sitting in your bed. Yeah. 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 Are you going to have to go through in your closet? Or your policy? We have no separation and we don't wear the mask in the Forever and always, unless I go to closing. You know, I, I've had not a lot of, you know, so bad at all, very much anymore, but there are occasions when you bend over and try to look at something and it crawls right up your face. And, you know, get some you know, get stuck in your eyelids. It's like you're foggy and glass. Foggy, yeah, that's still foggy. You know, the the, the way of wearing glasses. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. get, get so sort of scarred and just keeps popping up. Yeah. And I, I, I had to go in for a few uh, hours of call yeah. because now what they're doing is they're for the ventilation, right? So they stay in the middle. Now, of course, because that patient might be on dialysis yeah. three times a week and isolated. So now if the water system goes down, we or the machine has a problem, they don't want to fix that as well. It makes it difficult for me because I'm going to spot and you know go do something type of class or plastic, whatever it is. So I have to uh, go through I say in the last three months, yeah, once a month or so, because they just kept keeping that equipment in there. So this is the next question I got is, do you send your guys into the COVID area for service? They're not supposed to, but in the case of those specialties, we are. Yeah. 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 I was mentioning we had a COVID guy, he's the guy with the being stuck somewhere that got to get COVID, so he's, he's our man. <laughs> <laughs> Put your mask on, wear safety glasses, and get your butt in here.
speaker or more worried about, and we still haven't got a good answer, but the thing with fans and filters is that, you know, does it get stuck up inside the machine and how long does it sit there? And you know, we still don't really answer that. So we'll wait for a week out of them. Let them sit for a while too. Until they start screaming and need it back, which that happens routinely. Got to keep it safe. And we don't have a sterile area in our shop, so we can't. We have, we have, there's no cleaning stations, no bed loads, none of that stuff. So I don't really want to have a good place to do that. Kind of work. So. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. When I saw your yeah. picture of the flood, the flood. Yeah. Yeah. And I used to hire a lot of the IDT technical schools. Uh, oh, the private college will be paid back. And let me tell you, man, I, I just could not believe how many times I've been playing righty tighties. Yeah. It, it made me. Really question of do I need to do a well, the kind of service, service we get a few process here. They made it through that school, but they don't know how to train a screwdriver. The one thing that I heard is very overlooked everywhere because we assume that as a human being, uh, you figure out how to to have an idea how much pressure you have to use yes. inside a screw. Yeah. Same problem, you know. It, it, I used to tell people if you think it's tight enough, you went too far because <laughs> it makes just dink and it, um, you know, you know, you used to get the, you have a lighter and a big lighter and uh, those welded screwdrivers you could melt a new, new uh, thread and a you know, new uh, relief at the top of the what's left of the screws and get it out. And I, yeah, I think you're right, you know, it, 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 it was very revealing. I, I think of the six students I had, two of them were pretty good, they kind of knew what was going on. You know, like you start asking, well, hey, you know, what do you do? Oh, yeah, my dad showed me how to do this, or my mom had to do that. And, you know, if I wanted something to fix, if I wanted, you know, when we were a little kid, if I wanted something to work right, I had to fix it myself. Those kinds of things, right? And then there's the kind of kids in there who literally didn't know what the heck of a screwdriver was supposed to be the one you put on the screw. And, you know, God tried, God tried to explain to how many different sizes of Phillips style screws there are, you know, a dozen of them. <laughs> Torps or you know all those things, you know, there's all those kinds of fasteners that it just it, it doesn't come, you know, it, oh, it doesn't come natural. You know, that has to be taught. And uh, that was why it was one of the reasons, you know, it's a lot of fun they get to play and you know talk to each other while they're cutting up wires and looking at tightened screws and trying trying not to skip the screwdriver off and dig dig a hole in the palm of their hand while they're doing it because that happens all the time too. <laughs> all that stuff. Trying to get away that stuff. But I don't want to make my understanding is it was a family. Class, I think, for mm -hmm. So, in theory, now you can go through all your electronics courses, graduate bio med, never a soldering iron. Really? Yeah. Uh, Not that you solder it more than I went to the last year. And when I started with that, yeah. I said it's much to serve on the Renoni, lots of training, but it was a lot of And this bio med, she's she was she she was she was looking for that bit of a bit of for the longest. And those pumps, the animation of the flow pump, you know how you have to solve the brushes. And she didn't use flux. She don't she didn't know what flux was. Really? 
it's, yeah. kind of, it's, 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 it's not it's not um, so what it did is it created a community budget lots of money for training every year we send everybody almost everybody goes somewhere every year or something so it's a week or a couple of days or a week or even more uh, we're lucky though that you know GE's tricks so it's shit more constant so get you can get in a car to places that's easy Oh, it's so fun. <laughs> Actually, the food is pretty good. So. I still like the one that's seen in the middle of the I've never seen it. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. The one that I used to see, I quick class. The old train was different to me, just across the street from the airport. Mm -hmm. Easy. I tried in the uh, on the East Coast, right? No, no, no. Yeah, East Coast, Florida. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like West Palm, Palm Beach, kind of near it. Was a nice area. Yeah. Nice. Anything else before we go to the talk? Mm -hmm. One little comment about what you said about technology that make it easier for the guys like. Myself and all the guys that I heard when it comes to the biomedical field, that are also are coming from the mechanical field or the new service that you like just show my hand, job training. So, the biomedical field like, is easier for us, especially for me, because when was the last time any of you saw a single scope in the shower? Then, nobody used that in a while. They don't want to go to board, they you know, it's so good that you just send the board out for all the board. Yeah, space, yeah. I only take a couple of screws, a couple of yeah. bugs, you know, and you're done. Yeah, you know, power you know, up, test, and you're done, right? And you know, you know, we yeah. you know, electronics for that. We, um, you know, in, in, I can speak from the school side, you know, like every other school, and if you went to MATC, it's the same thing, I think. You know, they teach everything they can think of. And it probably doesn't help you at all. You know, you know, it isn't it isn't as much the device and sort of thing. It's the it's the fundamentals you need to understand. So that when you look at a piece of equipment, you you can look at it and figure out what's supposed to happen.
the publishers are treated as just an easy level. Yeah, I think there's like a joint commission requirement to do service manuals for everything. Yes. So yes. that the coverage right there. Yeah. So that is a joint commission requirement to have access to ready access to all the manuals for all the I don't want to go on our our design service our software the software uses the manual Oh, so I'll say Apple's laptop. Yeah. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's where it is. Where it is. We have, um, we have, in ours, we have two sources. We have a local source, and we, like you, we've been, we've been capturing manual, electronic manuals for decades now. We probably have 15,000 manuals online. In our, in our own, on our own internal networking shop. Just every, you know, every time you find something, it just goes into the category for the manufacturer. Um, we are at the bottom of the dollar. That software is kind of nice to be able to put that asset when you just go yeah. on the bottom. Yeah. If there is a electronic manual, it's a bad option. Yeah, yeah. we just say, and then it, it, it's the second part of ours. When you get a work order, it comes out, you know, it sends an email and you click on it. And, and if there's a manual available, it's already there. You just grab it, you know, you need to use it, it's just double click on it. Trusting that it's the latest because we don't we don't that's administer it. That's the people end. that it orders, it administers that stuff. So yeah. trusting it's the latest or it's actually the one for your sub model. You know, sometimes you don't get the exact one for your model, but but there it's a good start. You know, and, and you don't have to chase all of it. That's where it goes. That's where it goes. That's where the repository is very yeah. very vital. Yeah. Now you gotta have somebody that keeps yeah. the latest uh, checklist. Not everything. Field. It, it, it is a very uh, intensive task as a chapter, very well one that comes in. Um, so, so uh, 37 on my phone. Let me pull it um, pulls it out here. So, uh, uh, anything else? Anybody top topics you? We kind of beat the COVID thing to death. There's a couple of tips I think we we talked about. Uh, the, the ventilators, uh, the ventilators. They, they immediately with the fusion pumps, we were completely against it. You know, the ascension of the tubing. Oh yeah, the chair fusion pump. So the pump itself outside of the room, in the long ventilation the, the, the inside the ICU. Uh, then it, it, it left ICU and now stuck down. Had it now it's even Covid med search, yeah. all three of them, and we call it. We just look. I can't guarantee that it's going to learn properly. Right. Does it change the order? So, what would that be? What would be the thing? Well, can it tolerate it with the tubing? No, no. <laughs> that is that is that is back to it. Uh -huh. So, this is the key. No, you know, well, it's kind of like the medical rules. It's a medical professional rule for rules. So, so despite they, telling them that, you know, they, they weren't right. We've got all that documented, even as we talked yeah. about it in the DLC. So, if it comes up in the yeah. commission next year for us, we're covered. We told them. Stay yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, the latest thing has been the events. Big um, 40s that we had. Um, we bought the, the nine foot extension, yeah. but then the problem was, well, how do you, I mean, that thing is heavy, right? But where do you put it on? Uh, so that didn't turn out. Uh, the G5s, that one didn't go to beautiful. Those, those, you do have to go on, we will go up to 30, 60. So that one worked that out really well. We, I don't, we haven't, they haven't done that one yet. They, uh, they, uh, they actually share uh, resources across the state. So, we, you know, we routinely coordinate moving ventilators from one city to another as they need them. So, you know, and ventilators have kind of fallen out of fashion as a frontline treatment. You know, they're, yes, they still use them. Yes, people still need them. But they certainly don't, you know, bypass are much, much more. Uh, Popular now, over and over. It's hard to come by you now as when we were four months ago. Yeah. And the best thing there would be a integration. Oh my God, the last two and a half to 
three months, they have ramped up tremendously yeah. because every area that had that shifted in here, yeah. uh, now it was like, oh, get the capsule ready in that area. Why? Yeah. You're not even overflowing there yet. Just to get them ready. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we had it. You know, we had a, we were directed. They had some uh, abandoned. Um, they developed in one hospital called the new patient wing, and of course they abandoned all the rooms in the old hospital because they didn't need them anymore. They said they're kind of we've been resurrecting them slowly yeah. but surely, but turns out to be really expensive. It's you know just if if, if this nurse call alone, you know that to read to to you know, and they want to do what telemetry now in there it's like. It's a hundred thousand dollars to put a new telemetry system in. If we could, you know, get rid of it, shit, not going to show up tomorrow. You keep on the phone, like, hey, you know, <laughs> three to six months, you know, kind of thing. So, and uh, that's when I promised to be a stop sign. Yeah. You know, because immediately the quarters were at you know, 300 for us in Southern Cal, those ventilators. <laughs> and we were getting away from Covidian and the Charm, right? We weren't going to the 985 one. Yeah, we did go how we did five, um, but they couldn't supply that order. Mm. So immediately the nine agents came in, they warehoused them for two, three months. And then the our PDA started saying, Well, wait a minute, I'm paying all this thousands of dollars to get GUIs repaired, uh, and you have a brand new 980s and storage. So how about so all of a sudden now it's been the last month here. Now we're getting the new ones, we're putting the old there so functional in storage. So that's not final. We have that as a flu uh, fleet before, but no one here is big 300. It's mm. definitely a lot. And we get that as you know, the monitor too. Yeah. But now there's a repository uh, that you can literally call. You gotta go up to your command center, get yeah, all the tools, yeah. and then before you know it, in a day or two, here it shows up the truck with your delivery. Okay. Uh, and uh, see if you if you're Sending something back, same thing. Get that approved. Take off your old stuff, stockpile it there for somebody else, and then you can do stuff. But thing, although we beat two times already in the Southern California area, uh, right now they're just slowed down uh, for the infection rate. Yeah. But the projects that were limited in the first month or two, now that's all being wrapped up. So for us, that slow time was truly what what caused all these mm -hmm. innovation and equipment swap outs. And we, we, the last two months have been insane. Thanks, fellas, for stopping by. Thank you. I appreciate it. And um, <laughs> it's nice to hear. Yeah, it's nice to hear. But uh, yeah, thanks for coming and uh, appreciate you taking the time out to learn about like, That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs>